okay so let us solve this problem so this is the problem which is composed of two differential equations and you have to solve this problem using implicit Euler's method okay now how you are going to solve this using implicit Euler method now understand one thing the dependent variable here is x and the independent variable is t okay we we have a hybrid of using y and x or y or t okay so in this equation it is x so if you write down implicit Euler's method so there are two variables x1 and x2 for x1 it's going to be x1 i plus 1 x1 i is equal to f x1 plus 1 x2 i plus 1 into h and for the second equation if we write down so this is function f1 let us say f1 this is f2 or else uh, they both will look same so let us name it as f1 and f2 and this is going to be i plus 1 into h step says that we can 0 0.05 0 to 2 at t is equal to 0 x1 is equal and x2 is equal to 1 okay so as i told you implicit method both the side there will be unknown but here in this problem if you see you will be getting you'll end up with system of equations okay let us do that so basically this thing is nothing but f1 and this is nothing but f2 so let us substitute this f1 and this f2 in this equation so this is going to be x1 plus 1 x1 i plus 199 x1 x1 this should be i plus 1 plus 2, 9, 9, x2, i plus 1, into h. Similarly, x2, i plus 1, x2, i. So what I have done here is I have substituted these functions in this equation. Now if you see, there is unknown on both the sides. Okay. so let us rearrange this because you won't be able to solve this equation okay if you are thinking that uh, you'll just try to make a table and you'll solve it you'll realize that we don't know we x plus one is the value that we want to find out okay and that is the unknown and it's on this side so we'll have to bring it on the left hand side and then we can think of some solution and we'll see what what is happening so you'll realize when you rearrange you will be getting this kind of solution so this is your first equation and uh, system. so before this uh, if you see we were not able to solve this problem but now if you rearrange this you will find some hope okay if you see this is my equation number one and this is my equation number two so this looks like what a linear equation Okay, I think we have already discussed about system of linear equation. So this is nothing but what system of linear equation. This is one variable. This is another variable. And then this is thing, the constant, oh, not the constant, another variable. So we can write down this. We know the value. What is the value of h? They have given us the value of h. So the value of h, if you see, is 0 0.05. If you see. They have given the value of s is 0 0.05 so if you substitute 0 0.05 here here okay you will you, get an equation and if you write it down in matrix form what you are going to get is 
minus 149.95 100 and 151 so we'll be getting this kind of equation so basically what we're interested in finding out we're interested in finding out this that is xi at the next iteration okay and x uh, x1 at the next iteration and x2 at the ne next iteration and we will always have a value of x from the previous iteration okay now if you see when you start with the zero iteration when i is equal to zero you'll realize that this is 98.95 this is going to be x11 this is going to be x21 and this is going to be x10 x20 but if you see the value of x10 and x20 is given the value that is value of x1 and x2 at zero iteration that is at uh, t is equal to zero this is my x1 at t is equal to zero this is my x2 and that is nothing but one one so we know that this value is nothing but one and this value is nothing but one so if you, if you if you want you can directly write down here that this value is one and this value is one so if you want to find out this value there are a lot of ways you can you can do it but i think the better way is what you will do is you will take this matrix on this side when you take the matrix on this side it becomes inverse of this matrix okay so when i say this side you are not actually taking this side what you are doing is if we have a matrix a let us say we have this matrix b so what you are going to do you are going to multiply a inverse on both the sides so this is going to be x this is going to be a inverse sorry this 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 is a vector so a inverse so we know that a inverse into a inverse is identity so the value of x identity into x is nothing but x so the value of vector x is nothing but a inverse so when i say take this take it on this side what i'm what i actually mean is this okay obviously you cannot take matrix like from here till here what i meant is this okay so don't uh, misunderstand so if you do that what you have to do is you have to take the inverse inverse is just a two by two matrix so if it is a two by two matrix you can find the inverse of that in your calculators and if you see the value of inverse is so after taking inverse you just have to multiply okay so instead of doing here we can directly directly write down this equation okay the main equation like this that is okay this equation i am writing it down by using inverse and what is the value of inverse so basically what you'll have to do is So you have to take the first iteration. You have to get the value for next iteration. Then that next iteration you are going to substitute here. Multiply with this matrix, get the next value. That next value again substitute here. Multiply this value and get the next value. Next value again put that next value here. Multiply with this matrix, get the next value again put. So this is how you have to continue doing this. So if you see here, if you multiply this and this, you'll find out the value that you're getting is 5.619981 and minus 3.71522. Okay. Now again, what you're going to do for next iteration, put this value here. So when you talk about the next iteration, next iteration is going to be x1, x2, 
second iteration and now we are going to substitute this value the newly found out value okay so if you do this matrix multiplication again the value that you will be getting is 5.44385 and you are going to go on doing this till t is 2 this is the this is what zero point two. You have to go on doing this till t is equal to zero. So this is how you are going to solve a system of differential equation using implicit Euler method. So we all know the advantage of uh, implicit Euler method. The advantage is it is unconditionally stable. So whatever value of step size you take, it's always going to be stable. But the only disadvantage is going to be it is going to give you system of equations if you say okay so this was just one two by two only two differential equation if this it's n by n so you get system of equation n by n system of equation and you have to solve that system of equation that's the only only drawback i think so implicit methods are better in terms of stability than as compared to the explicit method okay. the next explicit, explicit method is conditionally stable that means you have to satisfy the step size should satisfy the stability condition okay i think that's it for this lecture uh, see you next time